What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here for another AKW Q&A video. As always, leave any questions that you'd like to ask me for the next episode of this series in the comment section down below or on my Discord server. I have a dedicated channel for questions for my Q&A series where you can just go in there and leave as many questions as you'd, as you'd like. Um, so yeah, if you want to leave any questions for the next episode of this, then again, comment section or my Discord server, either one of those two options is fine. Other than that, let's get into the first question for this week's episode of AKW Q&A. The first question this week is coming from Mystical Wolf 1357 and they asked, how would you rate Royal Vampire Class? A couple of changes, uh, Royal Vampire Class or just Vampire Lord, um, and so those changes have made various effects to the viability of the classes, a so farming class and such. Um, so in its current state, uh, I know Corey did a class comparison video on the class and I trust his judgment and I believe in that video he said that it was better than Blazebinder um, and on the testing servers it's without a doubt better than Blazebinder so I haven't done my p personal testing yet and from memory I believe Corey said that it was better than Blazebinder so uh, I guess I trust his judgment in the sense that uh, he did the testing he um, knows the true answer to that question and so yeah I guess it's a really good farming class in its current state um, so yeah, that, that's basically it. It's a good farming class. <laughs> Next up is a question from Milu and they asked, what do you think about the dress up aspects of AKW and would you like to join in on them? How come you stay with the set you always wear and never have fun being creative, putting together new sets by mixing items from different events and such to have more fun playing? Is farming for items slash gear other than classes something you would do if you felt that you could abandon your current set? I know that you like your set as is and that people could recognize you more with the same set. But how about letting letting go and having fun with the creative flow and making sets in the game? Um, and so yeah, I'm this big a big thing with me is uh, the fact that it's really really difficult to try and create a new set. I've sort of considered making a new set before, and I'm I'm not so I'm guess I'm open to the to the possibility of creating a new set, but it's just so hard because every item. Uh, of mine is obviously in my bank and so it's really difficult to tell what the items look like and I can't remember what they look like based on just on the name and so I know bank item previews are coming from in the server rewrite and so when those finally do come to fruition I will be uh, no doubt probably creating some sets and stuff because it'll be a lot easier and with, with item previews for your bank items but as it currently stands it's just too much effort to take the items out and look at them individually and stuff so I, I really just can't be bothered to be honest as it currently stands, but um, it would make it easier when bank item previews are in the game, so I guess I'll give it a go then. Our next question is from Migo, and they asked, if you could pick any one class to be pinked on Balin's birthday, which class would it be? Would it be fair to release a pink version of Card Clasher, or do you think the class should stay as a Heramite exclusive? So I am 100% against exclusive classes, so I'm just going to answer the, the Card Clasher part of this question. I think that's a more interesting part. Um, because I don't really have an answer for the first part of the, the question, to be honest. But um, Card Clasher being pinked would be amazing. Um, I'd love that, honestly. The more people that can experience Card Clasher, the better. The thing with classes in AKW is it's such an integral part of the game. And, you know, whatever class you have equipped dictates how you play and dictates, you know, your experience with combat and with the mechanics of the game. And so by restricting players um, on classes, you know, not allowing players to use certain classes or just, you know, making them rare, making them unobtainable for s some players. I think that's bullshit. I think every player should have every, sh I, I think every player should at least have a chance to experience every class. And so, uh, yes, I 100% think that um, card clashes should get pinked, but I don't think they will because I know a lot of players would get mad uh, because they obviously would have gotten card clasher in the first place because it was an exclusive class. And so by releasing it, a pink version of the class, they are having their version um, devalued. And so I do think that AE, I don't think AE would ever do this, but I hope, I just, you know, I, I guess I live in hope of it happening. Next question is coming from The Boss, and this is more of a suggestion, but I think it's still a, a pretty interesting idea. Do you think AE should do dev streams every two weeks? Uh, you know, interacting with, with the players, taking suggestions, reaching out to the community in general, maybe even telling us about the new releases rather than us relying on the design notes all the time. You know, like their old series Adventure Couch, but this time with the whole AE team. So I don't have actually, I haven't actually seen Adventure Couch, but I, from the name and from your suggestion, I, I can infer that it's probably like a series where they had a couple of their devs just like talking about stuff, just sort of unscripted, having a bit of a chat. Um, that sounds like a really cool idea, honestly. I think, um, you know, all the personalities over at AE, they've got interesting personalities, and I think I'd be, 
I'd be really keen personally to, to see them talk about their stuff. And I think communication is one area that AE is really good at, but also an area that they're really uh, terrible at with certain things like, like I said before, like class balance. Class balance isn't even talked about at all, like ever in um, AQW. And it's such an important part of the game, such an important part of uh, players actually having fun with the game. And yet they never talk about it. And so I think there are certain areas where AE could improve in terms of their communication and so I think that a, a series like you say like a stream every couple of weeks where they just talked about AQW and answered questions would be really interesting and so I think yeah that would be a, an amazing idea I just don't know whether whether they'd be open to that sort of thing or whether they even think they need to do that our next question is from Taco and they asked do you think you'll ever play another RPG game that isn't Destiny 2 so there are two ways I can answer the question. I know what he's asking because AQW and Destiny 2 are both MMORPGs and so that's its own genre. But I could give a cop-out answer and just answer his question directly because he's asking an RPG game. He's not specifically saying MMO. So I could say, you know, I've played The Witcher 3, I've played Skyrim. But uh, no, he's. I, I think he meant MMORPG. So um, no, I don't think I will play another MMORPG aside from Destiny 2 or... AQW. I recently started playing Destiny 2, and it's I'm sort of struggling to get into it, um, but it is fun. I like it. Um, I've sort of tried to get into WoW before. Not really. I just sort of played it for about 10 minutes and just got bored and stopped. Um, Guild Wars 2, I kind of started almost getting into it a little bit, but just, I don't know. I think MMORPGs in general are kind of boring. Even Destiny 2, I'm kind of, like I said, struggling to get struggling to get into it because, because the gameplay is quite boring. Um... Well, I guess just the whole, uh, the game, the core gameplay loop, I, I guess, is kind of boring. The gunplay is really satisfying, and, you know, shooting stuff is obviously pretty fun, but, um, it gets mundane after a while, as everything does in an MMORPG, but I guess it just takes time for me to get, like, uh, invested in the game, and then I can sort of get into it, but, um, no, I don't, I actually don't think I will play another MMORPG, aside from those two, unless something else comes up. Next up is a question from... Yes, Reg. Yes, Reg. I don't know. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. But uh, they said top five support classes. Um, so instead of answering this question, I'm just going to leave a poll in the description down below where you guys can vote on whether I think you guys think I should make this video. Now, keep in mind, support classes are really hard to evaluate because there are different types of support classes. For example, you know, Lightcaster and Archfiend are completely different support classes. And yes, Lightcaster is technically a support class, but. Um, yeah, no, there are different, there are really different types of support classes, so I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't really be able to be able to make, like, a, the same, in, in the same way I do make my normal top fives, so I sort of just have to, like, list five really good support classes and not really give them a specific order, but at the same time, I think it's, it would still be interesting, so leave, uh, not leave, go to the comment section, uh, not the comment section, the description, go to the poll that I hopefully linked, and uh, you can vote on whether you think this video should happen. Our next question is from Sheena, and they asked, worst player encounters you've experienced? And so there's a couple that sort of stick out, and it's actually sort of been repetitive. Like, I've, I've seen this a couple of times, and for me, this is like a really specific thing that only, I guess only people like me would experience, but um, in-game, I get kind of, I get recognized a fair amount, like, uh, you know, sometimes going around Battleon or whatever, or just AFKing in a room. People often will recognize me and, and from my videos, and they talk to me and stuff and say hi, and 99% of the time, that's 100% fine, and I, I really, honestly, I really like getting recognized. It, it, it honestly makes me feel, like, kind of famous, almost. It's, it's like a really, it's a, it's a nice feeling. Um, and I and I love interacting with you guys, but sometimes you get the one guy who's like, "Hey, Renegade, can you make a video?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "Can you make a video right now?" I'm like, "What do you What do you expect? Am I just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit down with you right now and make a fucking video?" Like he, honestly, it just it's just the most it's it's not even like annoying. It's just kind of just honestly, it's just kind of um like just just completely surprising because it's just like. Someone expects me to sit down, stop what I'm doing, and make a video about whatever this person so pleases with them in it is right now. Like, I understand that that would be such a cool thing for a lot of people to have that happen to them, but like at the same time, it's like, what? What are you ex like? Honestly, what are you expecting as an answer to that question? Like, Jesus Christ! I'm not just gonna make a video right now just for you, pal. Like, Jesus. Our next question is coming from Swerve, and they asked, what do you think about raids? It could be something that brings people together and communicate with each other to get awarding items. So, uh, yeah, raids are in other MMORPGs, and I, I've not played an MMORPG enough to experience a raid before, um, but 
from my understanding, I have a lot of friends who play WoW, so I kind of understand what they're about. And essentially, I believe you enter like a, a dungeon type thing um, with various like difficulty levels and stuff. Like you, you basically require a big group of people to do them. And you can like public lobby, but it's best to do it with a group because you can get all the rewards and do it all efficiently and stuff. And they're really cool because you sort of, I guess you kind of like schedule with your, your guild and stuff. And you, uh, you you sort of work towards your goal and everyone has their own like dedicated role. And, you know, you all like measure your efficiency and you all, you know, get some loot and some gear and stuff from the raid. And it's just, I guess, I think it, I think how it works is you, um... It's like you progress through like a room with in ever in like increasingly difficult monsters and stuff, and like at the end there's like a really big like boss dude who you have to really like concentrate on to like focus them and stuff, and they're usually really difficult. And yeah, no, I I just I like that idea. Um, I don't really know how raids work in depth though. Like to be quite honest with you, I've not really experienced a raid before, but uh, I know they're in Destiny and I know they're in uh, WoW. So yeah, that that'd be cool. I mean anything to enhance the gameplay as it is in AKW because the gameplay in AKW right now sucks. This next question is coming from Farlax and they asked, what is your favorite kind of music? So I'm really into, well, it's kind of weird because, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this question in depth because if we, uh, if we look at my Spotify, like history, I have Spotify premium, um, from my phone plan. So I've had it for a very long time. And so I've been listening to Spotify for as long as I can remember, honestly, probably like five years. And so I can look at like my stats and stuff and see how much I listen to. And I'd say I listen to, I think about between anywhere between six and 10 hours of music a day. So I listen to a lot of music and pretty much every time I'm doing anything, playing a game often, even sometimes when I'm recording, I'm just like listening to my playlists on Spotify. So my music taste has evolved a lot over the years. So Originally, I got into like electronic and dubstep type music when I was like very young, and I liked I liked Skrillex a lot. Um, and I sort of evolved from electro sort of evolved from dubstep to just electronic, um, which is a lot better in my opinion. And then we got electronic to like electronic funk, then to like funk, and now to like funk disco. And now like kind of my music taste has sort of evolved into. Uh, like funk 80s type like disco music I, I like a lot of 80s music and stuff and um, but also I really like music that sort of sounds 80s but is new so like music from um, who's an artist that does that Flight Facilities is my probably my favorite band um, Oliver Nelson does a lot of that type of stuff or well, he's kind of like electronic I guess uh, Client Liaison that's another Australian band that's really good um, yeah like I and some like 80s artists that I really like uh, Earth, Wind and Fire um Michael Jackson isn't really 80s, but he's kind of like 70s, 80s, 90s, sort of even 2000s as well. But yeah, there's a lot of, I, I like a pretty wide range of just like music now, I guess. Anything that sounds kind of like funk and a lot of music sounds like funk. Like even when there's a lot of music that could be considered funk, like, you know, uh, Bruno Mars, most of his music is pretty much considered funk. So I like his music a lot. Um, yeah, I also kind of like Logic as well. Uh, there's a couple of songs from Logic that I really like. It's not really funk or anything. It's just music that I enjoy but it often depends on like my mood and stuff as well like what I listen to but yeah generally as it stands now the genre that I guess describes a, the vast majority of my music is funk I'd say our next question is coming from not the wrecker and they asked what are your thoughts on Don Sword's ban so if you guys aren't familiar with Don Sword he's a, like a really incredible um AKW farmer um, he's made two videos by the name of Don't Try This At Home 1 and 2, and they are incredibly impressive videos where he essentially just does a bunch of farming and then deletes all of what he farmed. So he'll farm for like all the juggernaut items and then just delete them all. And like he'll farm for like Void High Lord and then like delete it like five times over and over. Like he just does it like insane, just crazy stuff like that. And it's honestly, it's honestly painful to watch, but at the same time, it's just super impressive. And it's like, wow, this guy is just. Yeah, so um, I, he, honestly, just go over to his Twitter account if you're not familiar with him, Don Sword on Twitter, and you'll see um, you'll see basically what, what he's like. But uh, this guy got banned. I don't know what for specifically. I've heard it was from, uh, I've heard it was from like room glitching or merge glitching or something or glitching in some way, um, or maybe I think he like talked about glitching in game or something like that, and that got him banned. I'm not entirely sure, but either way. My stance on the meta is, if this guy, okay, this is just, this is what presuming he did glitch, okay, let's be clear, this is presuming he glitched, 
And this is presuming it wasn't just the quest glitch, because the quest glitch you're allowed to do. AQ to A, A allows players to use the quest glitch, um, but they do not allow players to use other glitches. So let's just be clear, um, this statement I'm about to make is with the assumption that he did use a glitch, a glitch that was more severe than the quest glitch. So uh, he's, a, he's an experienced player. He knows what's up with AQW. He's probably played it more than all of us combined. Um, so he knows about glitches, he knows what happens to glitches, and he knows that glitching is bad and it's against the rules. Um, and yet he did it anyway. So for that reason alone, for that, that statement alone, I agree with AE's decision to ban him. I, I think that it's bullshit that the glitch exists in the first place, and overall I'd say I feel sorry for Donsword, um, but at the same time, he knows the glitch is, was, is bannable, or he, he at least knew it was wrong to do what he was doing. He knew, knows that he's exploiting the system. Um, and so I think it's A didn't make a bad decision. A was within their right to make that decision. Um, of course, you know, that they own the game, but like I think they were in the right making the decision to ban him. However, that's assuming that he actually did glitch. I don't know whether he did or not. I don't know whether he's framed or what happened, but... Yeah, that's just that's just my take on the matter Next question is from Pete and they asked what's your opinion on rare classes? Do you think it's unfair for newer players that they're unable to get classes such as Chunin or Chunin? I think I've been pronouncing that, that class wrong, but either way uh, Yeah, no, it's uh, it's bullshit Every class should be available to every player in some way some of them might be harder to farm than others some of them might cost more money than others even but I think that at least every player should have the chance to experience every class um, as long as they were willing to either pay money or put time in. Ideally I'd say that classes shouldn't be locked behind a paywall but AE has to make money somehow so I understand, I at least understand if they want to lock some classes behind paywalls um, but I don't think they should lock classes behind rarity walls I don't think, I don't think classes should be rare, I don't think classes Classes are such an, like I said before, classes are such an integral part of the game that I don't think they should be locked behind, locked away for no other players to experience. Card Clasher, in my opinion, should be available for everyone. Everyone should at least get a chance to experience that class, but as it stands right now, the card games are sold out, so no one can get the class anymore, um, as it currently stands. I think it's coming back though, but still, um, you have to purchase from Hero Mountain. Some people can't physically get those items shipped to their addresses. Some people can't afford it. And so I think that, uh, yeah, I think classes should be available for everyone. I don't think classes should go rare at all. Next up is a question from C-Dosh, C-Dosh, Kadosh? I don't know, I, I'm sorry. Again, I'm awful at pronunciation. Uh, they asked, why are broken classes like Void High Lord and stuff not nerfed? So just to be clear, I do think Void High Lord is broken and yet it's somehow, it's somewhat justified. Um, but still, ideally, I said before, ideally, Void High Lord would be powerful and unique, and uh, it would, no, sorry, it would be unique and interesting and valuable in a way outside of it's just, it's a, it just it being powerful. So, uh, Ideally, it would have unique skills, unique animations, unique art, all that sort of thing um, that make it valuable and make it worthwhile the difficult farm. However, it wouldn't be more power, objectively more powerful than other classes in the game. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the idea that certain classes can be objectively more powerful than others. I've said this before, so I won't get too in into it, but um, yeah, I think it, AE though has to is struggling a little bit with that, and it's difficult for AE to think of a way to do that. So I, I understand, um, but Void Highlight hasn't been nerfed because AE doesn't necessarily think that it's too powerful. It's a very difficult class to obtain, so AE thinks that it makes sense that it's powerful. I, f however, think that classes should have their own specific advantages and disadvantages over other classes. Not necessarily just being like, yeah, Void High Lord can tank, heal, and damage pretty much better than every other class in the game, almost. So, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult situation, but um, that's pretty much why it hasn't been nerfed, because it's, it's, it's hard to farm. Next question is coming from 
Yezrej or whatever your name is. Sorry, I can't pronounce it again. This is the second time you've asked a question in this video and I still can't pronounce it. But uh, they asked, is it possible that a trading system will be available in EQW in the near future? So Alina made a post and I'll see if I can find it. I literally don't know where to find it, but it's been in like every Discord server I'm in right now for EQW. Um, Alina made a post in, I think it was on the forums, and she said, and I quote, the future of AQW as a whole lies in AQW Mobile. The current plans for AQW Mobile include significant improvements over the current web version of the game. Right now, we are talking about options for combat, enhancement, quest system changes, possibly trading. It's a bounty of brainstorming, and right now, all ideas are up for discussion. There's a lot more to about. There's a lot more to this post, and it, a lot of this has been taken out of context. And keep in mind, just please don't come away from this thinking that AKW is going to be just on mobile. They want to, they want to improve the web version of the game, and they want to create a mobile client. So let me just be clear: the, fu the there are going to be at least two versions of the game in the future, a web version, just like it is now, except in in Unity and stuff, I guess. Um, or a different engine and a mobile version of the game. So just to be clear, there is going to be a way to play this on a device other than a phone. Stop losing your shit on Twitter, okay? Everyone just needs to calm the fuck down. It's gonna be fine, all right? It's gonna be fine. And they are probably gonna make a Steam client as well. They've said before they're interested in making a Steam client. They've said they want to do that and they said they're working on that already. So yeah, it's like a, I'd say it's like a 60, 70, 80% chance that AQW is gonna be on Steam as well. But it's going to be on mobile and and, and uh, web. But anyway, to answer the question, um, trading is on the cards. Uh, Cicero made a, a, a post all those years ago where he basically said that AQW will never have trading. Um, but now, looks like they are actually considering it. And I completely disagree with this. Um, they, they probably, they're way smarter than I am. And they have they know how to make games way better than I do. So there's probably a way to implement this in such a way where it doesn't, have the problems I'm about to explain, but for me, at least, um, AQW seems like if you implement a trading system, it's just going to be fucked, because, um, you'd have to limit it in such a way that you can't abuse it, right? You'd have to limit it so much. You'd have to limit it so, so much. Um, you know, you know, can't trade rare items, can't trade, uh, hard to farm items, can't trade quest items, can't trade, um, you know, miscellaneous items, can't trade vouchers of Nolgath, can't trade this, can't trade that, can't, blah, blah, blah. You, they'd have to limit it so much that you can't, couldn't, honestly, they'd have to either make it a really gimped and useless system where, like, trading what's even the point, you can't trade stuff, or they'd have to rebalance, you know, rares, they'd have to rebalance, um, class farming, quest farming, all the, you have, they'd have to rebalance the game in such a way that it would be unrecognizable, or they'd have to gimp the trading system so much that it'd be useless anyway. So, I disagree with the fact that trading should be in the game, but like I said, A is a smart group of people, and they probably would think of a way to implement it without those issues that I mentioned, but fingers crossed, I, I guess it's just still in early, early stages yet. Next up is a question from Hyptic Design, and they asked, why did you start YouTube and why did you pick Adventure Quest Worlds for your content? And so I started YouTube all the way back in like 2012, I think, and I was on like a completely different channel and stuff, and I was uploading completely different videos, you know, about Minecraft and fucking Skyrim and, you know, all these other random videos and stuff, and I was inspired initially by a YouTuber by the name of The Syndicate Project, or Syndicate, and he was like my inspiration, and... Uh, to this day, I still think he's a pretty decent YouTuber. He's done some fucked up shit and some controversial garb controversial garbage, and uh, I've lost a lot of my respect for him, but still, I think he's a good entertainer, um, but kind of a piece of shit at the same time for, like, the CSGO Lotto bullshit that happened. Um, but aside from that, I think I wanted to, always wanted to... Obviously, I always wanted to be a popular YouTuber. That's what YouTubers want. They want views and popularity and influence and all that sort of thing. So, obviously, that's what I wanted. Um, and I never got that through any game ever. Um, always, you know, 10, 20, 30 views per video. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. Honestly, just no views at all on, on a lot of them. And I eventually got to the point where I 
continued playing EQW again back in 2014. I sort of picked it up again. And I was like, hmm, I'm making YouTube videos on all these other games. Let's see if there's YouTube videos on AQW. And sure enough, there was. And I noticed that 90% of the videos all were like typing in the chat. And it was awful. It's like, what the hell? What's, what are these people doing? This is awful. Why don't they commentate? And I already had been commentating for a couple of years. You know, I had the... I guess it, it takes a while, but you get used to commentating. You get used to talking to yourself. Talking to yourself is a really weird sensation to start with. And so you're really awkward with it. But I feel like I've, I'm not awkward when I talk to myself and I'm commentating. Um, cause I'm like, I, I feel like I'm just having a conversation with someone. So it's, uh, you, you kind of take a while to get used to it. So, but I already was used to it. So I had an advantage. And so I basically looked on YouTube and the only person who was making commentary videos that I could find was, uh, Zereldo or his name right now is Caval. And so I was inspired by him to then do pretty much the same sort of content that he did, which was like class videos and like news and we well, didn't do news, but I, uh, I had the idea to do news videos and stuff. And that's what kind of blew me up at first, the news videos. That was when Legion Doom Knight was first coming out. And uh, yeah, from there it just sort of exponentially increased and uh, there I am. So, uh, init but initially I got into making AQW videos because of uh, Zeraldo or Caval. And it kind of helped that he was a New Zealander and had a New Zealand accent and all that sort of things. So that kind of, uh, kind of uh, encouraged me to do that. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Our next question is coming from Ninja with a Rocket Launcher, and they asked, if you were to go about changing the entire meta of the game from soloing to integrated support, how would you go about it so that soloing isn't encouraged, but you're not screwed if there isn't anyone online that's willing to help you? So I've kind of had ideas with this in the past and with like, um, I guess, rewarding players who play in groups or I guess, um, I don't know, I guess increasing rewards like, like a drop percentages by a certain factor so that it was you could still solo stuff you could still do stuff by yourself but it would literally just be more efficient for you to join like a public room with other people there so that would be a good way to do it because you wouldn't be gimping any of the normal players you wouldn't be you know uh, i guess um disadvantaging any player who wants to um and who doesn't want to like party up with a group of friends and doesn't have any friends or whatever because you could just make them go into public rooms and that would still give the same like kind of rewards um, and, but you'd still kind of make it like possible to do stuff solo as well. Like you could still go and solo a boss and it would still be fine. Um, however, it would give less rewards than if you did it with a group of people. Um, even if the group of people you didn't know at all. I don't know. There's like, that's a really weird and kind of probably shitty idea, but there are probably other ways to do it. And honestly, if you just look at any other MMORPG, they've managed to do it in such a way where, you know, uh, they've made certain content literally impossible without getting other players to help you. I think, I honestly, I think raids and WoW are literally impossible if you don't have people with you. So I, I, I think that, um, I still think that, I think that it's, it's like okay to do that. If other games have done it to, to succeed, to varying degrees of success, then I think AQW can do it too. Um, but I just think that so much of the community is used to soloing already that it's kind of impossible at this stage, but it would take a serious shake-up of the game, I guess, to do that. But uh, overall, it would be a really good thing because uh, the game would become much more fun if we had to play with other players a lot more or had to at least interact with other players in, in a meaningful way in, in terms of combat. Next question is from Cycliff. Uh, Cycliff? I don't know. If you were to make a video with any AKW YouTuber, who would it be? Band players like Don Sword are, are included. So um, for me, I'd love to do more videos with Sync. If you uh, remember, Sync AE, uh, who is a class designer in the game currently, um, he does, he used to do AKW YouTube videos, and he was a great YouTuber, you know, I used to watch him, um, and yeah, and he just kind of stopped, but it would be amazing for, I'd love to do more videos with him, I did, actually did a couple of videos with him, and uh, that was real fun, and uh, it was a while ago though, a very, very long time ago, um, so I would love to do do more videos with him in uh, my current state, I guess, in the way I currently do my videos. Uh, but yeah, that would be that would be fun. I'd love to do videos with him. Our next question is coming from To the Max Gamer, and they asked, "What is the meaning of life? Not the def dictionary definition, but your meaning." So this question is very philosophical. Obviously, it's a very uh, difficult question to answer, and uh, many different things, including religion, can come into this. So I just like to first of all, state that this is my own opinion, and you don't have to agree with this at all. This is just what I personally think. Um, and keep in mind, I'm also an atheist, so I don't believe that a god exists. However, everyone is free to believe what they want. I'm a, 
I, I guess I subscribe to the idea that everyone is free to do and to think and to believe what they want as long as it doesn't hurt others. Um, but anyway, uh, this a video on YouTube by the name of Optimistic Nihilism um, by a channel called Kutzkazar in a nutshell. That's probably my favorite video on YouTube uh, because it basically states that the universe and life and everything is has no purpose. Everything is meaningless and our lives as humans are but small snippets of a essentially infinite or seemingly infinite universe and uh, once we live and die we will be forgotten and our existence would have meant nothing in the grand scheme of things. So it's a very depressing video but it also states later that um, because the universe has no purpose, because life has no purpose, we uh, can and will dictate its purpose. Because the universe doesn't have a uh, I guess an, a ruler or a uh, person or a ideology behind it we can dictate its purpose and we can dictate what we want to do with it and so it's kind of a it's a depressing idea but it's also a, a very freeing and uh, and uh, I guess comforting I thought to think that uh, you know nothing matters so why don't we make it matter I guess and uh I guess the only thing that matters is what you feel, and so at the end of the day, if you want to, I guess the only thing that matters is making yourself happy. So yeah, I guess that's I don't know. I guess that kind of answers your question. But uh, watch the video though. That, I, I'm really bad at explaining it. Watch the video. Optimistic, optimistic nihilism. I'll see if I can remember to put a link in the description be below the poll. But uh, yeah, watch the video. It's really good. It's my favorite video on YouTube. Our next question is coming from. Flurry? Flurry? Flyry? See, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry, dude. But uh, he asked, do you have a favorite movie genre? If so, what is it? What is your favorite genre of video games if you have one? So, movie genre. Um, probably, like, psychological thriller or, like, thrillers. I really like those. Um, I'm really into Marvel movies and, mar and, like, superhero movies, but at the same time, I think I'd get sick of them if I watched too many of them. I think just Marvel ones in general are just really, really fucking good right now. Um, but, you know, I like... Um, I like thrillers, I guess. My, some of my favorite movies of all time are... Um, Interstellar is not really a thriller, but that's probably my favorite movie of all time. Um, I like sci-fi movies a lot as well. Um, I also really like... Uh, I don't know what I like, to be honest. I like Doctor Strange a lot. I liked uh, Captain America Civil War. I also really like... Um, Wonder Woman was pretty good as well. Um, and the Dark Knight trilogy, those movies were good. I'm just listening to comic book movies at this stage. I don't know, I can't remember what movies I like. Video games, um, I like RPGs, but also I really don't like RPGs. Certain RPGs are really fun. I really liked Undertale, it's probably my favorite game of all time, but at the same time, I really don't like The Witcher 3, even though that's supposed to be a really good game. Um, so I don't know, don't really have a favorite genre of video games, to be honest. Hoback asks, you've continuously stated that you don't like to deviate from your usual set. Do you think any of the Black Friday or Cyber Monday recolors will change your mind? I honestly haven't even seen them yet. I haven't looked into them at all, but uh, I think they're pretty good this year, aren't they? I've seen Corey tweeted um, that he thinks this year's Black Friday or talk like a, not Talk Like a Paradise, Cyber Monday is going to be the best yet. So I don't know. I guess um, I, I guess it might, but uh, probably not. <laughs> and finally... Our last question this week is coming from Ninja with a Rocket Launcher, your second question of the video. He asked, AKW is the worst game you've ever played, but what's the game that precedes it? In other words, what's your second least favorite game? Probably a game by the name of Mortal Online. I only remember playing it for like 20 minutes and uh, what happened was I walked around, was disgusted by the graphics, the game looked like shit. I don't really like medieval games all that much as well, so that put me off a lot. And uh, also, I got stuck in a hearth and could not get out without re-downloading the entire fucking game. So I was like, you know what? This game is ass. See you later. And yeah, that was it. So uh, yeah, that was pretty much it for the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, look at the stuff I put in the description. Probably the poll in that optimistic nihilism video. And uh, join my Discord server. Leave some questions for next week's video. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.